what are we bringing to the table for others? Like, what are we doing? Like, how are we, and this is a buzz term, but how are we building value for others? And what are we giving as opposed to what we're receiving or putting a, you know, a dollar amount on someone or a yeah. transaction based mindset. And you just can't, yeah. you just said something well, today to me. What was it called? What, what was it that you said? You're like about, about giving and receiving. Stop focusing on what you're receiving and start focusing, focusing on what you're giving. I just thought that was huge. And, yeah. Well, you know, if you go back to, to 2020, when everything shut down, we didn't know what to do. And so we were like, well, I don't know. And you, and you made this comment, you said, well, when in doubt, I just, I've just given stuff away in the past. So, I, and we were like, let's just give it away. Yeah. And so we just started giving away trips, you know, saying, well, I mean, I don't know what to do. Yeah. We don't know. We'll just, people we'll need just it. Do this. People need and, it. And so we just did it. But, but what it did was it gave us a reason to have the conversation. We didn't focus on getting anything back. We didn't put any no, strings we to it. On you got to use this. Yeah. We were just focused. On, well, we were focusing on relationships. 100%. And I want to, I want to just, I think that's really important because you and I come back to this over and over and over and over and over again, whether we're talking to our, to our, our booking team, to our sales team, um, you know, anybody in our organization, we always bring it back to this. And, and I think that's the key. And we talk to nonprofits about it constantly. And I think that's the, the, the key is what are you giving? Focus on what you're, what, what value you're providing. Yeah, what, what are you what bringing to the table? Yeah. What value you're giving versus what you're getting back. Now, we do categorize things. I mean, it does make a difference to us if we've got a national client that does, you know, half a million dollars in business with us a year. Yeah, I mean, it does register on the radar and, and we're, you know, versus somebody who's, you know, we've just coached and they've not ever used our products. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, you've got somebody that's giving you 100000 writing you a $100,000 check every year as a nonprofit. you got to pay attention to that versus sure. somebody that writes you a 10. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting those are equal, but what I, my point is, if all you're doing is you're category, you're thinking about how you're sharing data, sharing information, doing yeah. that, you're not going to, you know, you, those getting those large donors never happens for us. Getting those large clients never happens because yeah. we start, you just don't know where relationships are going to go. You just don't I, know. I taught myself that early on in this venture and also early on professionally, just years and years and years ago was, I disciplined myself into believing it wasn't even a, I didn't have to, you know, it wasn't a, you know, a, a, a pipe dream or anything. I never knew who I was talking to. I always said that. And I never well, why don't knew. You be, speci be specific on what you're talking about. Tell us, tell, tell me what you're really talking. Be specific. Well, on, I, I just, situation. I never judged anyone when I had a conversation or someone made an introduction. I but wasn't like, I, where's. You're talking, about, you're talking about in this business, whenever you first got in sales. For you, sure, for sure, for sure. Whenever I first, what? whenever I first got in sales, and especially in this business, especially in this business where it's all where it's been proven to me time and time again, where we've adopted our own, you know, our own mission around it, where it's all relationship based. I never knew, and I never had any expectations. I was expectationless, and I thought that was awesome. That was a really cool mindset to operate from. It it was very it was liberating. Uh, it wasn't salesy. It wasn't transactional. And I gave everyone equal. I responded to everyone in the same timely fashion. I gave everyone the same amount of time. I never knew where these where these conversations and these relationships and these meetings were going to go. And I flew everywhere and I talked to everyone and I treated everyone the same. And it, you know, it ended up working out really, really well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, but you know, it was, I just, I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, I wish there was more of a blueprint. I guess I, I'm, we're just going really, really wide net here where, um, you know, it's one thing to say, like, I want every customer to be worth this much if you're in business or if mm -hmm. you're if you're talking to donors. It's one thing to say that. And it's another thing to go, well, before I even ask a, ask anyone for anything, what is it worth to them working with me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are well, they I getting that, working I, with me? Why yeah, me? I know. Why I, us? I think I think you that's know? a really good point. Is why why should they choose us over somebody else? And I think that everybody gets so caught up in that about why, especially the nonprofit space. And and I've sat in meetings with them, and they're like, "Well, you know," and I'm and they're like, "Okay, we're stuck, and we need we need we need an outside perspective." And so I start giving it to them, and I just ask them, "So, what are you doing for your donors?" And when I say that, you know, I always come back and I say 
When I say that, I don't mean that yeah. you need to give them anything. Other you don't need than, to give them a fruit basket. You don't need yeah. to give them a fruit basket. You don't need to, other than maybe some time and attention. Time and attention, I think, overcome it. You know, we talk about this with our team. And one of the things that, you know, we have to constantly encourage each other to do and, and um, is that to give our team, our, our, our team members, you know, our employees time. Yes. Because that means something to them. And, you know, that, that tells them that they're important. Well, they're, that tells them that they're important, that yeah. they have value, that their their company, because, you know, the owners pick up the phone and calls them, shoot them a text, say, hey, how's it going? And get, you know, spend 15, 20 minutes. And I don't mean just a deal. And I know that that gets to be, you can't do that if you've got a 500 employees, you can't do it. It's just, it's impossible. However, most of us, if you're in a leadership posi- position, when you give you the, the people that report to you, you give them that time, it means something. And, you know, back to the whole thing. Instead of just focusing on what they're doing for you, what are you doing for them? Well, it goes the same thing with donors. If all I'm doing is asking you for money, all I ever do is send you an email that's asking something, that's, get, you know, wanting something, and or it has it's a thank you, but has an attachment to it that says, you know, hey, thanks for what you've done, but we need some more. Well, maybe you need to stop for just a second and just start saying thank you with no strings. Yeah, yeah, no expectation. I mean, that you know, that's, I, I mean, I, I want to just, I'll touch it. We gave 300 trips away during COVID. Now, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that to pat ourselves on the back by any means. I don't, that's not, that's not the idea. We just started doing it because we were like, well, we didn't have anything else to do. We're kind of sitting on our laurels. We figured there would be some kind of return on it, but we had no I knew there expectation. Was a need. I knew there was well, a Well, yeah, because all of a sudden everything shut down. Nobody's getting anything, and there's still fundraising going on. Yeah. They needed something, and so we did. Yeah. And, you know, we, we gave – have all those people come back and become clients? No. No. In fact, I would say it, I, I don't even – I can't even quantify it because we, we never didn't, measured yeah, it. Yeah, we didn't track we, it. We intentionally didn't because we <laughs> didn't bad. want it. We didn't – well, <laughs> I, there was intention on my part. I just didn't want to know. I didn't – I wanted to just give without uh, – if it's truly given without strings, if I go back and measure it, well, then I'm, I've got some expectation to say, well, maybe maybe then we don't do it next time because we didn't get a return. And that wasn't yeah. why we want to do it. No, all the chips were down, man. I don't know. I, I kind of thought it was a, a unique opportunity. I'm also a huge believer in differentiation, a massive believer in that for business. And I was like, well, no one else is going to do this. <laughs> I was like, I, yeah. I, I, I really like looking back and, and, and see that we were, we were those people that did what no one else did. I like to zig when everyone else zags, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I think of the same thing. I think about this often, brother, and you and I talk about it often. We're going to do... Um, we're approaching a hundred episodes of a weekly webinar series and we don't push anything. We don't push any products. We answer questions about products and services that people ask, but you and I have, have, have maintained consistency in all of our guests and all of our guest hosts. And we literally have brought the brightest minds in the space to that webinar, to this podcast. And the whole intention was to give away information to make it easier for folks to raise money, to make it easier for folks to pick up the phone and make a connection and build relationships and everything under the sun you can think of that in, it, it involves, you know, uh, how your personal life bleeds into your professional life and how that bleeds into raising money, you know, for nonprofits. I think there's a lot of application, practical application to your to your life as well, of course. Um, but, you know, you and I did that and we're still doing it and we're never going to stop. It might be one of the greatest things we've ever done. Well, I, I say, you know, but but I think the the reason if it if it you know if, to say it it's good, the reason it's good the reason we know it's good is because we've had people come back and say wow you know because of what because of the information I got we were able to go do this, and they're not and even again, clients. They're not. They're not. You know they don't. But you know I gotta be honest with you. I'm not going. Oh my goodness. Oh <clears> man. I wish. I wish. 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 Man, it was actually. It's actually pretty. Oh, no, awesome we just keep doing it. Yeah. There's plenty of other people. It's such an abundance mindset, obviously, obviously as well, um, to to adopt. Where okay, they're not going to use anything or, you know, you know, buy any services or products or anything like that. That's not the point. There's plenty of other people that will. Yeah, and, but here, but here's the thing though. But let me let me let me point something out to you. I want to just yeah. I just want to lay this out. Yeah. Because I think this is what happens in the nonprofit space. They go, well, they haven't given to us in three years. 
the or donor? they haven't done yeah, yeah the donor yeah. they you know we, yeah. we're, we've got people yeah. we need to clean this up because they've not ever given us any they never done oh anything. man no that's not how, that's not it at all. I, I think if you've got somebody that's willing to listen to your message whatever it may be you need to continue to share it you need to continue to reach out you need to continue to give them because we've been told that you know we've been throughout you know doing all the stuff we do we as we work with nonprofits they'll come up and go oh yeah you know, I, I called on this guy for five years and, you know, it just never went, you know, he, he was always, you know, okay to take me to take the meeting. We'd go meet. I'd tell him about our mission. We'd have a good conversation and then just nothing happened. And then all of a sudden one day he said, you know, we want to come over and get behind. And they gave a six figure gift, um, uh, in multiple years of that with his company. And, and, you know, how many, and based on, you know, five years worth of, of outreach, the reward was significant. We've been told, you know, by folks that are like, I'm going out here, I'm, you know, I've been doing this, and the person, she gave us a $50 check every year for like five years, never more, 50 bucks. And then she passes away, and maybe it was 10 years, passes away and leaves a seven-figure estate to the nonprofit. That stuff happens, but it doesn't happen, but it doesn't, it's not going to happen if you're not giving and sharing and, and doing it. And I think the whole point you and I are talking about is, you know, and what your experience has been, my experience and our collectively experience has been when we give more than we take, we receive an abundance. It, it just flows in like, you know, um, and, and I think that's the, the idea and, you know, I think practically you got to think about what it is you do and maybe, you know, you, you say, well, you know, what can I give? Well, time, attention, gratitude. One of the things I, I think that I appreciate about working with you, uh, Trevor, is your overwhelming uh, sense of gratitude. And it's it's real felt. I mean, I, I know that because I'm around you every day mm -hmm. um, that you really share these things and wholeheartedly do it when you communicate with people whenever you talk to them and you know that you show to people like me who's right uh, you know you don't have to sit there and say oh thank you all but you do mm -hmm. and and I think having those things that you can give I just don't I think that's underestimated I think that that mm -hmm. we think well we've got to go give them you know I had a call with a, a nonprofit the other day and they were talking about what they were given and they were talking about like impressions and you know how many signs they were going to be on for donors and I said you know I don't think it really matters. Now, mm -hmm. if you tell somebody you're going to give them, you know, 25 impressions on social media, you need to give them 25 impressions on social media. Yeah. But I don't think that's the key if you're if you're sharing your mission <coughs> and it's something that they can connect with. I thought the time thing, I think that's number one. Maybe we should just dictate this out and write it down and have step one, two, three for folks just so it's more, you know, these are actionable steps. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned previously, you taught me about time and giving that to people and how it makes them feel, how good it makes them feel. And I've been able to apply that in our professional life. I apply that with my children. I apply that with my wife, my friends, uh, family members. We run a, we run a family business as well. Um, and I just think that's huge. I think I told you this a bunch of times. I, I recognize it myself sometimes. I, I'm like a no news is good news guy. So it's like if I don't get any news, that means everything's going okay, and I don't need to reach out. Well, and but I that, think every I think everybody's that. I think everybody has. No, that. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a thing. That but it do. takes discipline and a concerted effort on your part. I don't care if you have to write it down to remind yourself or put it in your phone. Um, for me, my mind swirls with people that are in our life and in our sphere and. I've tried to discipline myself now to where if I think of someone, I just grab the phone, I text them. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, yeah. Yeah, or I pick up the phone, I call. And it could be something that simple. And I think that's really, really indelible to folks that you come into contact with. This is a big, big world. And we're all, yeah. the, the separation the separation is, is, is lessening. <laughs> we're, well, we're separated you know, by I'll so you, little now. You know? Well, you know, here's, here, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, this this yeah, is yeah. a perfect example of how this stuff comes back around. Yeah. We have a, a lady who has come on. She she started this nonprofit. She found us somehow. Uh, mm -hmm. Started coming onto the web webinars, 
Yep. Started doing it. We helped coach her a little bit on, on gave her some ideas for her event. I think she used one item. I think she used one, one thing in her, in her event, but she raised a lot of money, like hit the goal, went surprise, hit their stretch goal, just killed it. And, you know, it was like, we celebrated, we celebrated probably more than she did the, of the success that she had. And we talk about it all the time. Um, and then she turns around and refers us to somebody and they call us because the, the raving review that she gave us and said, and they're putting, you know, a whole bunch of stuff in their event, uh, coming up. And they were like, yeah, we don't need, we, Becky's already said you guys are the ones to use. So we're, I'm good. That's that value does come back. And I think that's the thing, but you can't, but if we had given her the time that, you know, maybe do, if we had categorized the time that we gave her to say what we're going to get back, that she's going to put one item in an event and woohoo, it's all going to be, you know, because we, I mean, realistically, you know, that's kind of falls on the, on the lower end of, of people that we do business with. But if we'd have done that, we wouldn't have given her that service. She wouldn't have had the return, you know, got all the information. All those things probably might not have happened. It might have happened, but we were, we were able to be a part of it and, you know, and now we do get a return from it because we get, you know, a raving uh, fan who comes back. And, and I, I think that's the, but that's the thing. And, you know, and, and we're talking about in nonprofit, whenever you don't have anything but time, I can't tell you how many times I've had someone say to me over the years of being around this, I love her. I, you know, she is the best. She works so hard. She's such a great, you know, she's the CEO or the executive director, director of development, whatever it is, but there's going to be somebody in that organization that's connected to that donor. And they're like, let me tell you something. She's where it's at. I love this organization. I love what they do. And I love her. And the reason is, is because that person cultivated that relationship over time and would make that extra effort. She said, you know, it's nothing for me to get a phone call or her to pop in and say, Hey, how's it going? I want to buy you a cup of coffee and not ask me a flipping thing. Just ask me how no. I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a transaction versus value mindset. It's very interesting. Um, we're going to continue developing it and continue sharing it. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Cause it needs to be talked about. It's being talked about depending on what you listen to. We listen to a lot of stuff. Jason and I do. It's something, you know, most of the stuff, Hey, listen, we don't have the IP on a lot of these ideas. A lot of these things have been said before. It's just that we're living them in our own, in our own way. And we want to share the ideas and thoughts yeah. and, and shortcomings and wins and all those things with everybody. And just once again, just like a careful, you know, or excuse me, uh, an encouraging nudge. Um, as Jason said, you know, focus on what you're giving and less about what you're getting. Well, here, here's, here's a simple, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a simple task as something. Here's an experiment to do. If you're a nonprofit, take your top 10 donors and your bottom 10 donors. And let's just say, let's just make it a range, you know, uh, your top 10 period. And then your bottom 10 who have given you at least a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Put them on the calendar. In two weeks' time, you can reach out. You got 10, 10. It'll take you four weeks, one month. Reach out to one of them a day. Just one. Don't do anything other than saying, hey, how's it going? I just want to talk yeah. to you. I appreciate you. Thank you yeah. so much. Maybe share something with what your organization's done. I would. Yeah. Do not ask them for a nickel. Don't yeah. ask them for a dime. Don't ask them to be anything else than just say, I yeah. just wanted to let you know, you know, we just, you know, we sent our, we sent 500 kids to camp last year and yep. you were a part of it. And thank you so much. Whatever your that. mission is. I, yep. I think that's really, really powerful. Do the top one, top 10 and the bottom 10 and, and it, yeah. just, you know, circle back with us and see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> let us know. Hey, let us know how uh, it goes. In any event, yeah. um, leave your comments. We want to hear some feedback. If you're, you know, you're seeing this on YouTube or share it with somebody. Or, you know, reach out to us, Jason at HJFundraising.com, Trevor at HJFundraising.com. We'd yep. love to hear from you. Let us know how it goes. I think that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, brother. Really good. Yep. Appreciate you. All right.